on, let's go outside, let's take a walk in the sun. There are things to learn and things to see, a big wide world for you, your dog, and me. Dog Talk. Hi guys, and welcome to Dog Talk. I'm Pat Becker, and uh, you know my co-host here, Ted? Yes. Hi. And, and Donna Canada, how are you? I'm fine, Good. nice to be here. And this show today is gonna to be about one of my favorite breeds. I know I say they all are, but <laughs> I have had several of these. This is a German short-haired pointer. And pointers are wonderful dogs. Now, what do you know about the German's dogs? You I don't know a lot about them because we just rescued her about a month ago. But I do know she loves to run. Yes. <laughs> they are great runners. And I very, might say... Very smart they're, dogs. They're exceptionally smart. And uh, in Germany, they are, they are family dogs. They're very companionable. That's the thing that I think surprised me the most about her is how she is so loving. And we've had her a month. And They're very just, sensitive dogs. Yeah. Very, very sensitive. Taking over our family yeah. in a month. I can understand that. In the German breeding, there were three German dogs that were bred with this kind of DNA. The Drakauer, which is the wire hair, and the, uh, there is actually a long-coated German short hair. Long coat. <laughs> really? <laughs> if that makes sense. It's called the German long coat. But uh, these dogs are exceptional in that they are so focused. They do such a fantastic job in the field, don't you, baby? There are some uh, hunters that I know, quail hunters and uh, bird hunters of all kinds, that just absolutely prefer them because they are so focused. They are such absolute focused dogs, and they, they stay on the job, and they do a wonderful job. You are a beautiful girl. We are good. not hunters. It's fascinating to watch her because we have a farm down south, and uh -huh. we'll turn her out, and she'll run a few steps, and she points, and, and then, then she runs points. a few <laughs> steps and points again. Yes, it's she's... natural for her. So why was this dog uh, surrendered? Well, they had her till she was eleven, and they said that she got on their furniture, and they were going to put her to sleep, mm. and we mm. could not. Do that. I, I almost wish I hadn't asked yeah, that question I wish to... because I would have no patience like with someone people. like that. Well, that. You know, hey, they found her a great home. Yeah, so that's true. God was watching out for her with you, Donna, and we appreciate it. We have made her the dog of the week and you the lady of the week for taking her in. We so appreciate that. This is to A1 Pet Emporium and get this dog and some wonderful treats. I just happened to find a bird here for her. <laughs> oh. Let's see if she can see this bird. Whoops, it doesn't click. Looky here. What is this? Just. What is that? What is it? Is it a bird? <laughs> is that a bird? Well, it's funny for the viewers at home, there's actually a TV screen over here where she can see herself, so she looks over so here. She's watching, <laughs> yeah, she's watching that. Ah, I've lost my squicker here. Let's see. Hi, doesn't, doesn't work. Should work. Doesn't work. <laughs> oh well. Doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll Maybe have better. all yeah. of these treats for her. There are there are great things Good to eat in here too. We thank you so much, Donna, for taking this dog in. As I say, <laughs> German short hairs have part of my heart, and um, she's a blessing to our, us. We love I am, her. I am so glad because they do make great family pets. Gosh darn it, they can get on my couch anytime they want and they do <laughs> she has her own chair i love it she I got love her own chair, chair now. she's very happy yes pretty we're, uh, we're gonna take a quick break folks we'll be right back i just a1 pet emporium is oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats quality does not have to cost more and we only have the best if your pet suffers from allergies digestive issues skin infections or hair loss it may be the result of their diet a1 pet emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. Oh, I do love puppies. Puppies are wonderful. Are you wonderful? Yes, you are. Here we are back again with another German short hair group here. A couple of darling, darling babies. Now, um, Tell me about uh, Diana and Casey. Tell me about your organization. Our goal is to rescue German short hair pointers that are in unsuitable living conditions in Oklahoma. Sometimes they're in a shelter. Sometimes they are uh, surrendered to us. Um, but we uh, 
try to get them to where they are healthy dogs, socialized dogs, and suitable to become um, a family member. Yeah, so it, it is the German Short-Haired Pointer Rescue. Yes, of so, Oklahoma. Of Oklahoma. So it, it is an important factor here because there again, after, after discussing, we had our dog of the week, which was a German Short-Haired Pointer. A lot of these dogs wind up in shelters for various reasons. A lot of them are surrendered for various reasons that I don't always agree with. Some of my biggest arguments have been with some of the guys out shooting, out hunting, you know, with their dogs. There's a lot, these dogs are very high energy most of the time when they're out hunting, they are so focused. This is what makes them one of the premier dogs in Germany for, for hunting as a pointer. Um, but they do, their diet has to be correct. They do have a, a medical uh, problem sometimes with a diabetic thing. If they are not fed correctly and they, they do this high energy thing, and these dogs can run all day if you let uh -huh. them. This is the thing. But they do make great family pets, and we have to realize that. We have to convince people. Barbara Lewis, how are you? I'm just fine. And you've dealt with, with German short-haired pointers before. I have my aunt. That was her breed, and she's had she had several over the years. and. The last couple that she had were also rescues. So yeah. they're and great and it's, dogs. It's, it's amazing to me there again. I have had 12, about 15 of these dogs uh, during my lifetime, and I just can't get beyond the fact that they are so talented, they are so smart, they make good family dogs. What's not to like? So I can't figure it out. Tell me about this dog. This is Trixie. Trixie is nine years old, and she was an owner surrendered to the rescue. Trixie is actually what we call an alum of the rescue, so okay. she's been adopted. And she is a great dog. She's actually very mellow for a German short hair pointer. She's a huge lap dog, yeah. uh, as, as I'm sure you know. They Do you call. know why, pardon me for interrupting, <coughs> do you sure. know why she was surrendered, did they say? She was adopted by an older couple and the intention was for them to hunt with her. And it's my understanding that the gentleman had some medical problems. Ah, okay. And so. Well, thank goodness that they got in touch with you, with yes. the rescue, rather than the shelter. It can yes. be very traumatic. These dogs are very sensitive. So, you know, we, we really appreciate so much you bringing them in. And uh, I mean, there is so much to tell about these dogs, and this is a precious dog. She wants to be up in your lap all the time, and she is up for adoption, is she not? She is. This is Clara. Yeah. Clara is estimated to be about two years old. Uh -huh. She was rescued from a shelter. Mm -hmm. She's actually just getting better. Uh, as you mentioned, sometimes the conditions in the shelters are, are pretty bad. She had several different tick-borne illnesses that we're working to get her nice and healthy, yeah. and she's available for adoption. Great, that's super. Well, we're gonna take a quick break here, and when we come back, let's talk some more. Hey, Dog Talk fans, make sure you join the conversation on social media. Just go to facebook.com slash dogtalktv. We'd love to hear a story of your furry friend, so send us an email to pat at dogtalktv.com. You could be featured as our Dog of the Week. Now, enjoy the show. So one of the reasons that, that we called you and got in touch with you is that uh, Ted had, had gone down and taken some video of a, of a dog that was blind, a German short-haired pointer who was blind. So obviously you had known this dog, right? Right, he was surrendered to the rescue um, by his owner who is a hunter and, uh, because, and he was, his name is Cody. Cody was going blind, uh -huh. and he was unable to hunt oh. anymore. So Ted <clears throat> called and he said, "Can can we do something?" I said, "Oh, absolutely." Yeah. So you you did you went. To yeah, the you know I um, I often do appearances on Rise and Shine, and uh, I, I just happened to contact your rescue, and I, I met uh, a dog that had a crazy story, and I wanted to share it with you all. Recently, I came across a wonderful eight-year-old dog named Cody who's being fostered by the Oklahoma German Short-Haired Pointer Rescue. Cody is completely blind, but that's not a problem for him. In the backyard especially, he's very aware of where the fences are, where the house is, and so he can take off running across the yard, and he doesn't usually have a problem out there. See, not an issue, and he gets along with other dogs as well. We have a Dachshund, a Chihuahua, and a large breed Mutt. Um, 
he, he plays a lot with the large breed. He can't really, he, he would hurt the smaller ones and I think he knows that. But um, he gets along very well with all of them. They, our dachshund likes to love all over him, give him kisses. And Cody is most certainly a former hunting dog. He can hear well enough to catch birds. He's caught birds in midair before and then he likes to bury them. Uh, he gets along really well with, with all of our other dogs. He plays with our bigger dog. Mm -hmm. um, they wrestle around, they pull the rope toys and, and stuff like that. Yeah. He's a sweetheart. So why is this dog up for adoption? You know the reason. Cody's owner was a hunter and Cody hunted with that person and then Cody went blind and got kicked to the curb. It's heartbreaking. Um, He's, he's still a good dog regardless of his ability to hunt or not. and He still deserves mm -hmm. to, to finish out his life with dignity in a good home. He spent all that time getting accustomed to that family and they just got rid of him like they never actually cared about him. I'm offended on his behalf. <laughs> he's a sweetheart and I just think it's a terrible thing to do to a dog. Some people just see dogs as a, as a tool like for, for hunting in this case uh, we see them as more family and instead of property that's cody's sad story but maybe he has a silver lining you can adopt cody by going to okgsp.org well how perfect is that ted thank you so much and, and we then, you know we hope cody does get adopted because uh he you know he'd make a really good good companion so. you know it, it is kind of interesting because during the pet expo we found a booth with a, uh, a distributor of um, apparatuses for dogs that are going blind and blind. And it's called uh, Muffin's Halo, I think. And I think we have some of that coverage too. Let's watch that. We had to stop at this booth because we didn't know what was going on. Carol, what is this apparatus that this dog is wearing? Well, this is Muffin's Halo Guide for Blind Dogs and also for vision impaired dogs. It helps them navigate. It helps give them their confidence back. The little halo part here bumps into the wall before their face does. So it's a little barrier so that they don't, yes, so that they uh, can pretty well touch their way around. They do. They do it by, it's a tactile thing, I can when see. He, when he bumps into something, he just makes a little adjustment and goes a different way. Right, exactly. It also helps protect them from face injuries, eye injuries, because they can't see branches. If they get an eye ulceration and the eye has to exactly. be removed, it's, it's traumatic and expensive. Yes, of course. Of course, of course. And for older dogs or dogs that have an accident and have this happen to them? We have for even puppies that are born blind, wow. born with one, without one eye, um, all the way to senior dogs. The design itself is wonderful. It's very user friendly. It's very lightweight. I had seen some homemade devices that were really similar but they looked cumbersome and uncomfortable and yes. and this it the wings come off the bumper comes off it comes in lots of different colors has even a quarterback motif which is really fun for the great big costume dogs very costumey well if someone wanted to find out about this kind of thing where would they where would they go where would they reach you well um, they can call me on my cell phone and I'm happy to give that out okay what was that number that is 214 729-6212. So is that, sounds like a California, is that a California? No, it's Dallas. It's Dallas, Dallas. We're out of Dallas, but we're the regional representative for the Muffins Halo Excellent. product. Excellent. Um, well, you know, it will save a lot of dogs' lives because otherwise a lot of people will give up on a dog that do. cannot see and turn them in or euthanize them. So this gives them that extra time, you know, with their, with their owners them so much more adoptable. Oh, yeah. oh gosh, um, yes. Sylvie Bordeaux, who's the inventor, she even has a uh, nonprofit organization that donates halos 
to shelters for dogs that would otherwise not be adoptable. And it's called Muffins Halo. Muffins Halo. And they can go online maybe? They can go online or I would prefer that anyone in this region can call me. Um, it's it's just such a remarkable It innovation. is remarkable. Well, we appreciate so much you letting us see this. Thank you. There is so much out there, so much information about dogs who are disabled. And a dog that is disabled, especially in something like this, it does not mean the end of its life. As a matter of fact, I ran into a man uh, named J.D. Wilcock who has written a book called My Blind Dog Still Wags His Tail. And this is a, a very good book. I recommend it. It is about a little beagle. But it also points up that blind dogs do have a life. They can, can have a value, and that's important. I found recently in uh, the Dogster magazine a, uh, an article about a blind dog that actually is a therapy dog. So Barb, you tell me, can blind dogs be therapy dogs? Absolutely. All kinds of disabilities, blind, deaf, three-legged, and in fact, that sometimes makes them even a Barrett or a therapy dog mm -hmm. because people that we're visiting sort of relate to them because they have a disability or they have some limitations of some kind. Mm -hmm. But for a, an owner that has a blind dog, one thing that they have really have to learn when they're out doing therapy dog visits is to be very observant because they have to act as eyes for their dog. Exactly. And you know, uh, Diana, we were, Barbara and I were discussing this, and we have decided that whoever adopts this little dog, this little blind German short haired pointer, uh, Dog Talk would like to give them a year's supply of dog food. And Barbara is going to donate a whole session, a whole, what is it, six weeks? Six uh, weeks dog of therapy dog training so that this dog can become a therapy dog. So this dog has not only great value as, as itself, but we hope that this will encourage someone. And I would hope that you will seek a really good home for, the, for that little dog. Well, that's just amazing. And yeah, we are very particular about who gets our dogs. And so when Cody finds his perfect family, we'll certainly um, put him in touch with Barbara. So excellent. Excellent. And advantage. let me know because we're not only going to donate a, a year's supply of dog food, but we're giving you a $500 donation to, with, to your organization. Thank we you so really much. believe strongly in this. Guys, you know, disabled dogs can have a life. They do have a life. So please, please, please consider this. They make great therapy dogs. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk with an ophthalmologist that does dogs. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. Dr. Virginia Schultz is with us today, and we are so pleased. Dr. Schultz, thank you so much for coming. We've been talking previously about blind dogs. Now, I noticed that you brought this one that is, uh, we're talking about enucleation, which is the removal of the eyes. And when is that necessary? The majority of times that we remove eyes is because of something that can't be controlled. It's a blind, painful eye, and it can be due to glaucoma, it can be due to trauma with uncontrolled hemorrhage, it can be due to intraocular tumors that can't be controlled mm -hmm. by other So methods. actually the, there is pain in the there eyes. There is pain. Okay. And you were telling me this dog was a drug dog? <laughs> years and years ago. Uh -huh. And the first time I saw him, he had one eye removed, and then by the time I saw him, the other eye was involved with glaucoma, and it was blind, yes. and again, it was painful. Yes. Well, let's discuss some of these uh, the, from different... I noticed you brought some things with you to kind of demonstrate and let us see what each one of them is. What is okay. this? This one, I just wanted somebody to see what a normal back of the eye looks like because 
dogs and cats have so much prettier eyes than people. Ah. <laughs> they just do. Ah. <laughs> so nice normal nerve and a nice set of blood vessels that stream off from the nerve. Uh -huh. um, this right here is called a tapetum. It's an area that they have that we don't have that allows them to see it at night. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. double That's, stimulates the uh -huh. light. Uh -huh. So this is the way it's supposed to That's be. That's the way it's supposed to look. This right here is what we usually see the first time I see a patient with glaucoma, and glaucoma is pressure that usually affects the eye and causes it to be painful, and it usually help, um, harms the eye so that mm -hmm. they don't see. Mm -hmm. What you notice is that the blood vessels that are here on the whites of the eye, which is the sclera, are really, really enlarged. Uh -huh. The other thing that you notice is on the cornea, which should be a nice clear tissue is nice and cloudy. Well, that's usually the first thing that we notice when the pressures are up. It's really, really uncomfortable. This is like a person that has a migraine. So the first sign that we usually see is, oh yeah, he's sleeping a lot, or he just doesn't act like he feels uh, as so good. So he was in pain. He was in pain. Uh. And, you know, they exhibit pain differently than we do. They go take a nap or just go lay down. Exactly. They don't whine like we do. We well, whine and a lot. two, that's very primitive because it, it when you're in that, when you're a dog and in a pack, you know, or a wolf pack, as they say, you know, you don't want to exhibit weakness. No. So this is what they do. It's well, that not, is oh, that is really interesting. It's not very pretty. No. This is this is one. This is a golden retriever, and I've got it upside down. But this is a golden retriever, and what we notice with a lot of golden retrievers, they get a disease called pigmentary uveitis, where they develop a lot of pigment in their eyes, and it develops into usually a secondary glaucoma. If you look at this one, you see how red it is up here. Mm -hmm. So again, it's like the glaucoma that you had before. This right here, is a couple of areas where there's strands of this iris, which is a brown part, uh -huh. and it's sticking to this lens that's right oh, behind wow. it. So it shouldn't be stuck there. The problem with it sticking down is fluid is made in the back of the eye, goes through the pupil, and it leaves right in front of the brown part of the eye so that it stays the normal firmness. Mm -hmm. Well, if this starts sticking down, well, the fluid is made back here, can't leave up here, so pressures go up. Wow. So here's So that's where I, uncomfortable too. It's really uncomfortable. So here's where iris is stuck down. This right here where the little brown arrows or black arrows are, this right here is a fibrin clot. So you know that there's fibrin in the air eye, so there's tissue. So it'll feel like there's something sticking yeah. in your eye all the so time. So it's really Whoa. uncomfortable. Whoa, yeah, that can be. This is another golden, and what you're seeing here is an iris cyst and what happens is pigment pinches off the back of the iris, the brown part of the eye, and it fills with fluid and here's where it's still attached to the iris. These are really common in Goldens. In a, a study of someone submitted 18 golden eyes and with 18 of them there were 13 of had these. And you know I noticed that the Morris Animal Foundation is doing a whole study on golden retrievers because they have such a medical history. They do. There is so much that's going on with them and it is really really very sad because what a wonderful breed of dog. They are wonderful dogs. They are, uh, Morris is actually doing also a, um, a cancer study uh -huh, and exactly. you're allowed to enroll your normal appearing golden and they will help pay for blood work and keep track of it and see how it progresses. Right. If and they, can they tell then uh, if there is a predisposition for that? That's what they're trying the to do right now. Oh, so that would be great. But this looks like a little olive or something. It does. And the, the size of it compared to the eyeball is, you know. And sometimes you, you might see one and sometimes you can see multiple. And a lot of times Ooh. what we do is dilate the, uh -huh. the eye so that we can see if there's any kind of sneaking around back yeah. here. Wow. That's woof. It's very unusual. Yeah, exactly. And this is still another golden. And what you're seeing here are pigment areas just mm -hmm. laying on the and, front and of how the And how does that how does that happen? Did they, is it looks like little flakes or something? They think that it come 
it's from the back of the, the iris. Usually this iris, which is the brown part of the eye, becomes thickened mm -hmm. and really dark. Most dogs' iris is not this dark. It looks muddy and really mm -hmm. thick. Mm -hmm. There is not a primary disease that they know of that causes this. They, it just happens. Mm -hmm. um, the cysts that you see are not directly associated with it, but many times you notice the cysts that are within the eye. Wow. So. You know, there, there are so many of these, and it, and it, is, uh, it, it is interesting because when a dog gets one of these things, what, what are the symptoms? What can a person who owns a dog see that they go, whoa, you know, obviously if the dog is bumping into things, mm -hmm. there is a problem. But a lot of dogs, you know, and I know with, with glaucoma and some of those, uh, a, a graying of the eye does not necessarily mean there is something happening, no. but there are changes that are made. So what does a person, how does a person recognize some of the symptoms? The most common complaint that I have is, you know, he just doesn't act the same. He's sleeping more than normal. Sometimes he rubs his face. He's missing his treats whenever I toss them to him. Oh. He used to catch them, you know, three or four feet in the air, and now he kind of looks around for them. Or I turn off the lights and he can't. Mm -hmm. find anything. Yeah. So. so immediately when you see something like that, you should call your vet. Now, do you call a primary? You're a referral vet? Yeah. We are a referral vet. We see, and several veterinarians send their patients to right. us, and then a lot of times once they've been there, then they go, well, I'm just coming in anyway, <laughs> yeah. because we've seen Well, it. and that's a good thing, that's but okay. I, I wanted to, to really uh, realize that, because a person should tell their their general vet. They uh, should because and let them know. they're going to keep track of that little person, little furry person, the rest of their life. So they need to know whether, oh yeah, he's having trouble. He's eating more than normal or drinking more than normal, or he's just not acting yes, right. Yes, just he's not right. So they anemic, so they so. go to your regular vet and then they refer to they you. They do. You and, are a surgeon. And a lot of times this. I'll call them up and go, yeah. "So have you ran blood work? I would like some blood work, or have yeah, you did this exactly. or this or there?" Oh, that's Excellent. that's Excellent. oh, it, it, this is so important, guys, because as a dog gets older, and generally those things happen at what age? I mean. The the, the glaucoma can, I mean, any of these can happen at any age, but with a senior dog, you really want senior to watch dogs, that. Senior dogs, you would really like to have your veterinarian have a base level of, let's start out with maybe once a year, do some blood work. Right. If anything looks unusual, let's yeah. go ahead and do I like maybe twice, a going in twice a year. <laughs> I, did, I think twice a year would be ideal. Thank you so much, That's Dr. Schultz. That's personal opinion. Uh, well, I think <laughs> your opinion is exactly right on. Okay. Thank you so much. These demonstrations, these cards are just wonderful for okay. us. And we have appreciated. It kind of lets everybody know. Guys, we've had a terrific show, and we hope that you have enjoyed it as much as we. Very informative, some very beautiful dogs, and disabled dogs sometimes make great therapy dogs. So keep that in mind, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Talking about dogs, talking about big dogs, uh huh. Talking about little dogs, oh yeah. Chasing the ball, chasing the cat, digging whole thing like that. Dogs, talking about dogs, laughing dogs, sad dogs, happy dogs, mad dogs, dogs. Just talking about dogs. Lost and alone, running the street. Checking the garbage, looking to eat out there sad.